Hey guys, welcome back, Manjinio here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Idabao ID80. This is a keyboard that a lot of people have been asking me to check out and it's priced at around 150 US dollars the last time I checked. Thankfully, Idabao was actually nice enough to send me one to review, but as always, this will not affect my review at all and I'll be sure to give my honest opinions on the keyboard and of course, on today's sponsor, NordVPN. Do you ever browse the internet at night looking at pictures of the henta eye? Yeah, that's right. I know you do. It's probably your wallpaper or something. Disgusting. If you don't want your internet service provider or anyone on the internet for that matter to know about your sketchy search is the f you should use NordVPN. NordVPN helps to encrypt any data you send and receive while browsing the internet. So in my spare time, I like to watch anime on Netflix, but sometimes I can't get access to specific anime because of the country I'm living in. With NordVPN, all I have to do is select a country, and I'm gonna pick Japan, and I get access to all of the anime available on Netflix in Japan. And I can do all of this within just a few seconds without moving a single inch from my chair, so I can watch my life drift away watching anime. NordVPN is also extremely fast as they have over 5,200 servers in 59 countries and it works on most operating systems as well as on your phone. If you go to nordvpn.com slash homogeneo or use code homogeneo, you can get a two-year plan with a huge discount as well as one month free. Pretty good deal. And now, back to the video. The keyboard comes with a few accessories. We have some spare kale hot swap sockets just in case a few on the PCB stop working, an interesting screwdriver, not really sure what it does, some screws for the PCB and case, as well as a braided gray USB-C cable. This isn't the best cable I've received with a keyboard, but it's also not the worst. It's just decent and it works, so I don't really have any complaints. We also have a shine through keycap with some Chinese letters and symbols on the corners. It's not something I would personally use, but you know, it comes with a keyboard. And lastly, we have some clip-in cherry stable which you can use for your own build, but I am not a huge fan of them, so... So I received a black version of the Idabao ID80, and first impressions, it is very minimal. It just has a very nice, simple, clean design. There aren't any logos or engravings or patterns. It's just straight up well-machined, pure anodized aluminum, and I really like it. Although it is a little bit light in the hands, which did surprise me, but not to the point where it felt cheap or low quality. The case is really high quality and it does feel extremely robust, but yeah, for an aluminum case, it definitely does feel a little bit lighter than I'm used to. The side profile of the keyboard is also extremely clean and simple. It has an incline which makes it more comfortable to type on and also gives it this nice dynamic look. It is an exceedingly simple design. The edges of the keyboard are also rounded off really nicely which makes it really smooth to the touch. The bezels on the left and right of the keyboard are pretty minimal but the bezels on the top and bottom are slightly thicker in comparison. The layout of the keyboard is also really comfortable and what I mean by that is that the arrow keys and navigation keys are spaced out really nicely. It doesn't have that same compact design language like some other 65% keyboards. It's laid out in a way that makes the keyboard look and feel a lot more spacious. Alright, so let's take a look inside. The Idabao ID80's back panel is secured to the keyboard via six screws. And once that's removed, you can get access to the PCB, which is secured to the top panel. And once you've unscrewed that, we're left with the top panel, PCB, and back panel. So this keyboard uses what we call an integrated plate design, which is the same as the Drop Alt. It has a back panel which serves as the back door to the keyboard, a PCB that screws onto the top panel and plate. And lastly, the top piece itself, which acts as both the plate and the top housing for the keyboard. Personally, it's not what I would recommend for any keyboard. There are a few advantages to this design, like easier assembling and cheaper manufacturing, but there are also a lot of negatives that come along with an integrated plate, such as a stiffer typing experience, pinging, and a more hollow sound signature. Some people may actually prefer this, and that is completely fine. It does ultimately come down to preference, but I personally don't like it when my keyboard sounds hollow or feels too hard when typing. One of the main features of the ID80 that surprised me were the PCB mounted stabilizers. Majority of keyboards with an integrated plate design, or at least the ones I've worked with, tend to use plate mounted stabilizers. And although they aren't that bad once you've modded them, in my opinion, PCB mounted stabilizers will always sound and feel a lot better. So I was really happy with Idabao's choice to use PCB mounted stabilizers. So the ID80 comes with a hot swap PCB, which is, in my opinion, an amazing feature to have. Basically, it means that you don't have to solder in any switches yourself, and you can put them in and take them out whenever you want, which is a great feature for beginners. The PCB also uses a south-facing switch configuration, which means that there won't be any issues with interference on cherry profile keycaps, which is something that happens when you use a PCB with north-facing switches.
So the one thing that the PCB doesn't have is any RGB or backlight capabilities. And at this price point, I am really surprised that they didn't include a PCB with any RGB. Even though I don't really look for RGB in my keyboards, having that option to just turn on RGB if you feel like it is always really nice. So again, for the price, the lack of RGB is definitely pretty disappointing, but it's definitely not a deal breaker. It really just comes down to how much RGB matters to you. Today I'm going to be using Lilac Linear Switches from Ilum KB. These are another recolor of JWK's line of linear switches. I have a video reviewing Noir Roses, which are basically the same switch, so if you want to learn more, check that video out. I've looped these with Crytox 205G0 and filmed them with Deskey's switch films. As for the stabilizers, I'm going to be using Duroc Smoky screw-in stabilizers. I prefer screw-in stabs over clip-in stabs because they have way less rattle and they sound and feel a lot cleaner. And to lube them, I'm going to be using Kinetic Lab's new lubing kit, which they've sent over. It comes with a lubing tray, some very high quality and ergonomic brushes, and a syringe with your own carbon GS2 switch lube. I like to lube all of my stabilizers with Crytox 205G0 as it's thick enough to reduce a lot of rattle, but not too thick to the point where the stabilizers feel mushy and sluggish. And once I finish modifying all of my stabilizers, I always like to test out my stabs on a PCB with some keycaps and switches to get an idea of how the stabilizers will actually feel. A general rule to follow is that if it still has some rattle or pinging, you have to add a little bit more lube onto the stabilizers. If it feels too mushy or sluggish, you have to take the stabilizers out and try again from the start. It's hard to give a specific guide for all stabilizers, so it really just comes down to testing and adapting based on how your stabilizers sound and feel. I also originally wanted to use stabilizer foam for my PCB, but the bottom out felt a little more mushy than I was expecting, so I decided to remove them and install the stabilizers without foam. So once the stabilizers are fully modded, I can now start to assemble the keyboard. But after putting in the switches and testing out how it sounds, I realized that the keyboard sounded really hollow. I knew from the integrated plate design that it would be somewhat hollow, but it was slightly worse than I initially thought it would be. So I decided to try and use some 3mm thick sorbethane foam from Amazon. Now now keep in mind, this is my first time ever working with sorbethane, so it was still pretty new to me. I originally tried cutting it to the size of the back panel so it would fill up the entire back side of the keyboard, but unfortunately, the keyboard is built with an incline, so the bottom of the back panel didn't have enough space for the foam. So I had to gradually cut more and more of the foam until it could just fit in the keyboard. So with the foam installed, I can now begin reinstalling the switches and of course, the keycaps. For today's build, I'm going to be using GMK Olivia Light keycaps. I think the white base with the light pink and black accents goes really nicely with the ID80's matte black case. And it just adds a little bit more color while still keeping the overall appearance very minimal and elegant. And now for the sound test. Subscribe to Hamaji Neo. Alright, so overall, I really like the sound of the Idabao ID80. I think that the foam helped to eliminate a lot of the hollowness that made this keyboard sound, you know, relatively cheap. The overall typing experience on this keyboard is also really good and 
yeah, I mean, it is a bit stiffer than most keyboards due to the integrated plate, but the incline and the really comfortable and spacious layout of the keyboard more than makes up for it. The only real issue I have with the keyboard is the lack of VIA compatibility out of the box. I think that VIA is really important with keyboards now. It just makes it way more accessible to beginners. And yeah, the whole process isn't that bad. You just go to QMK, install the firmware, flash the PCB, install the firmware on the keyboard, and there you go, it's done. But when I look at this keyboard, I think of beginner friendly. This is the ultimate like nice starter kit. And to use software that can be really intimidating to beginners just feels like a weird step back. Regardless, this keyboard is still absolutely incredible and it looks beautiful and it's built really well. I really like how simple and minimal it is. I can't say it enough. It's just a super clean keyboard. I love it. One thing to mention, there is a V2 of this keyboard and I actually haven't tested it out myself. Hopefully I can get Adabout to send me another one so I can compare the two and test them out and just you know, see the differences and I'll let you know what I think about it. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do consider subscribing. And if you want to support this channel, you can join me on Discord, follow me on Twitter, or you can support me on Patreon. Anything works. I really appreciate all the help and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. ASMR.